side, that contrast, the pain I felt, the things I've went through in my lifetime are the things that make me Preston Smiles. Rastafari, what's going on, y'all? From the beautiful Greek island of Mykonos, Paracalo, Yasas, Hola, como estas? Mambo VP, what's up? What's cracking, my dude? Hello, I love all of you guys. Blessings and blessings. Welcome to the tribe. Welcome to the family. If you are new to the family and you have not been to PrestonSmiles.com, do so right now. Ah, all right, let's get it. Today's transmission is a story. A story that I read in the book, After the Ecstasy, The Laundry, by Jack Cornfield. In this book, Jack shares a story that he heard from an actual woman who went through this. I believe about 10 to 15 years ago, there was a woman whose son was murdered. Her teenage son was murdered by a another teenage kid who killed him a part of a gang initiation and the kid went to trial and at the trial after the judge gave the verdict uh, which was a particular amount of years the woman stood up in the trial and as they were walking the little kid out she said I'm going to kill you now six months later this 14 year old kid is in jail and she starts to visit him she starts to bring him money and, and talk to him and give him f money for snacks and cigarettes and whatever else uh, he's using it for. And there's a point where a few years go by and she realizes that he's about to get out. And she's been visiting over and over again and just really befriending this kid. And she asks him, you know, um, I, I see that not many people ever come visit you. Do you have any family? And he says, no, uh, I'm an orphan. She says, okay, well, do you have any plans on getting a job when you get out? Um, and he says, no. And so she sets him up with a job uh, at one of her friend's shops. And she says, um, listen, do you have a place to stay when you get out? And he says, no. She says, okay, well, while you get back on your feet, I'm going to have you come stay with me. And so the kid gets out and he stays with her. And he lives with her and he, he, he's uh, doing this job and he's eating her food and he's staying in her house. And one day, she calls him into the kitchen. He sits down at the table and she says, Remember in the courtroom when I said I was going to kill you? And he says, Yes, I'll never forget that. She said, Well, I did. Because I could not let the murderer of my son live on this earth anymore. And so I sought out to forgive you and the world for what happened to my son and to kill that part of you that could hurt another like that. And so since the killer is dead and my son is dead, I would like to adopt you if you would let me be your mother and have you live here with me. And the little boy said yes and that became his mother. Now the moral of the story is you can't get ahead while you're trying to get even. A lot of us have had some pretty terrible things happen in our lifetime. And don't get me wrong, I'm not asking you to all of a sudden be over that. What I'm suggesting is, is that it hurts you more than the person you're aiming it at. When you are hateful and resentful and angry and unforgiving. And so the only people you should be trying to get even with are those who have helped you along your journey. The only people you should be trying to get even with are those who have loved you even in the midst of when you didn't love yourself. 
This is the game to play, guys. You see, forgiveness is a process. It's not an overnight thing. Forgiveness can sometimes feel like the ocean, where one day the tide is high and you feel good. You feel good and you've let it go. And then another day the tide is low and you are angry and you are upset and that you have all rights to do. But what I'm reminding you of is that you cannot get ahead while you're trying to get even. Forgiveness is one of the bravest things you can do for another and for yourself. You free yourself, you free up energetic space in your actual mental body and your emotional body and your physical body. You free up space when you remember that we're all on a journey home to the self and that everybody on the planet does things that they regret, does things that are not becoming of their best versions. And so you and many other people, everybody you know has done something stupid. The question is, is can you have compassion? Can you have compassion? Remember, hurt people hurt people. And so nine out of 10, if someone has abused you or hit you or hurt you or sexually molested you or anything of that nature, nine out of 10, that same thing has happened to them. And we're not condoning the behavior. What we are saying is that no problem can be solved at the level of consciousness in which it was created. Therefore, if somebody hits you with fire and you react with fire, then the only thing that remains is fire. Guys, we have to move into the wind, we have to move into the water, we have to move into our earth space and get grounded and remember that we're all on a journey home to the self and we ask for this. Contrast is one of the most beautiful things we can have on this world. Every time I experienced a breakdown, a breakthrough came on the other side. That contrast, the pain I felt, the things I've went through in my lifetime are the things that make me Preston Smiles. So let this be a reminder that you cannot get ahead if you're trying to get even. Guys, I love you so, so much. Blessings and blessings from the beautiful Aegean Sea in Mykonos, Greece. I am, we are, hashtag love's voice is going down in a beautiful, major way. A woman without a vision for where she is going will always return to her past. You see, a lot of us, find ourselves in trouble repeating old patterns going back to old relationships moving back to the things that were comfortable because we don't have a clear vision for where we're going